Hey DLI students, welcome to the screencast that I promised this morning. Sorry it took more of the day to get to recording this than I hoped it would, but I'm going to walk through some of the features of the Spider uh, Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. We often uh, refer to these development environments or programs. They're basically a text editor with some built-in functions for writing code. And ours is Spider. So you should see on the left here that I have a blank untitled .py file. And I can type commands in there. I also have my interactive Python console here on the lower right. I don't need my object inspector or my variable explorer. So I'm going to close both of those just to simplify my screen. You can do that too. So I have my script that I can write on the left, and I have my interactive prompt in my console on the right. The first thing I want to show you is that if you prefer, you can grab where it says IPython console and pull it down to the bottom of the screen. Oh, that's not what I want. Pull it down to the bottom of the screen, and now I have a program above my console or I could put it on the top or the right. So these panes are rearrangeable. I'm going to keep mine on the right. I can also adjust the width by dragging this bar when I see the little arrow. Let's go half and half. The first thing I wanna show that we didn't get to today is that I can use Python just as a calculator. So I could say two plus two, hit enter, and it tells me four. Or I could have eight divided by two, that tells me four. If I want to do powers two star star, I get star by hitting shift eight. Two star star three would give me two cubed, should tell us eight, and it does. Now there are a few things that work a little differently. Oh, let's cover multiplication. Two times, we can use our distributive property, four plus five. This all works as expected. Notice these are all integers. Let's try something that uses two integers but gives us an answer that isn't an integer. So I'll say uh, one divided by two. You might expect that this would give you 0 0.5, but it gives us zero. And the reason is one and two are both integers, so my answer has to be an integer. The types have to match. But if I said 1.0 divided by 2.0, gives me 0 0.5, or even one point divided by two point, putting the periods after the numbers, forces them to be what we call a float. That is the type of the number. So I can do math with both integers and with floating point numbers, which can have a decimal place part as well, non-integer. I can also define variables and say a equals three, b equals two, and then do things like a divided by b. Notice I expected to get three halves or 1.5, but those were both integers. I'm going to hit up once, twice, thrice. a equals three point, b equals two point. And now a divided by b gives me the expected result, 1.5. So that's something to be careful of. Usually when we're writing code for physics, uh, we'll be using numbers with decimal places. Uh, that's how the physical world works. Let's look at some other functionality. You might remember that I can make uh, an array. Let's take a look at that. Suppose I make an array. x equals array. This is one way to make an array. I'll put a list inside this array. One, comma, two, comma, three. Close my square braces, close my parentheses, and it tells me array is not defined. But the reason is I didn't import PyLab. Array is part of a library called NumPy, which is part of PyLab, NumPy, for numerical Python. So I can do that from PyLab, import star, and I'll hit up twice again. Now I have my array x. If I type just x, notice it's not x equals, but just x, typing the variable's name, hit return, and it will echo 
showing you both the type and what that array contains. Let's try x plus x. That gives me 2, 4, 6. So I've added element-wise 1, 2, 3 plus 1, 2, 3 gives me 2, 4, 6. What would happen if x was a list? I'll call it x list. So if I had just my parentheses, 1, 2, 3, then x list plus x list gives me 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So this operation, when the type of object is a list, will just concatenate or stick together the two objects, plus concatenates. But the reason we like arrays is it lets me add element-wise, which you will see will be very useful. To look at our plotting examples, let's make a bigger array for x. x equals a range, and the syntax it's showing me is start, comma, stop, comma, step. I'm going to start at negative, let's see if it knows what pi is. It does. Look at all those beautiful decimal places of pi. I'm going to say x equals a range, which is just a tool for making numbers with a starting and ending point. x equals a range, negative pi, comma, pi, comma, point, one. Let's see what it looks like. We have values every point one. So this place here is changing by one each time we move along. One, zero, nine, eight, seven, six. And now we can plot, you might guess, I'm going to plot a trig function. I can plot uh, x, let's say plot cosine, plot x comma cosine of x. So what does this mean? It means my x values of the points I plot are going to be those values from negative pi to pi, and the y values will be cosine x. Let's see what it looks like. This is plotted for me in a second window, right here. And I'm seeing, that doesn't look like cosine, let's clear it. Hitting up, plotting again, and that's what I wanted. So notice cosine comes here at negative pi from negative one up to positive one, down to negative one here at plus pi. Uh, probably you like to see an x-axis through the middle here, so let's see a way to do that. I can plot x comma zero times x. So this will be these values up here, and then the y coordinates will all be zero, but I'll have the same number of points because zero times x is just this many zeros, whatever the size of x is. Let's check what the size of x is. Size of x, 63. So I have 63 numbers spaced evenly between negative pi and pi. So let's plot x comma zero times x and I will use a black line. Our letter for black is the last letter of the word black, because B is already taken for blue. So I have another line there. Let's watch it. So I have my line moving from uh, negative three to three. Uh, if I don't like the, uh, the X range being like this, I can force that too. I can say X range. Uh, Sorry, x lim negative pi comma pi. Let's watch it. And that has corrected, so we have the axis going all the way along here. Great. Let's remember how we made those dots. If I want red circles, the symbol for circle is a lowercase o. And we will be watching their ROs along my axis. If I want to make a thicker line, let's go back to our cosine plot. I'm plotting x comma cosine x. And the line width is called LW. I can say LW equals 3. 
That'll make a little bit thicker line. Let's see what color we got. Green. Each new plot that we make cycles through colors in a certain order. So if I issue that command again, it'll plot over it. And now it will be red. If we do it again, now it is cyan. So that's a little bit about how to do plotting in our console. Suppose I like these commands, I can go back and copy what I have into a script, and then I'll have a way to make that plot by copying all these commands. I was just using the up arrow there to go back through my commands. From pylab import star, I remember x is an array that goes from negative pi to pi in steps of 0.01. If I want to make that a little bit easier to edit, I could say x left equals negative pi. I'm just making up a variable name x left. x right equals pi, and x step equals 0.01. And then I can put those names in here. Never retype something when you could copy paste it. Control x, oh, control z. I'm going to copy that, control c and paste, comma, paste. Paste. And now my plotting command, I'm going to name a figure, figure one. I'm going to clear that figure in case I run this multiple times. And now I'm going to plot x, comma, cosine of x. I'm going to make sure that uh, the limits of that go from x left to x right. And let's put in that axis as well by drawing just a plain black line from left to right. So we're going to plot x comma, do you remember how we get all zeros? Zero times x. And we'll make that line black. Let's make our cosine a little bit thicker. Remember line width equals three. What color would you like that to be? Let's make it cyan. I'll save this as plot example dot pi. Save it. And non-keyword arg after keyword. Oh, I need to put my color first, is what that means. That's something I only know from experience. So what does that mean? Some arguments, like the color, have to come first, and other arguments that need something like line width equals are called keyword arguments, which are always optional. They have to come last. Let's see if that plotted what I want. And it did. Here's my beautiful cosine curve from negative pi to pi, and my black line going through it. Now suppose I'd like to add more to that plot. What would I like to add? I'd like to make a subplot. Would I? Maybe not today. That's too much. I think I've talked long enough, so I'm going to upload this so you can watch it. And I'll come back in another screencast to show you a little bit more. Until then, have a happy Wednesday or Thursday whenever you're watching this.